Alright guys. Okay. Just finished my breakfast, but I figured um I've kind of thought about this all morning on how to explain this really well and uh, I actually got some props together. So uh hope you guys enjoy. Welcome uh Crypto Rave and Top Gun Titan. Hey guys. Um okay. So current scenario on the Dow right now, we just kind of heard about white hat uh with hackers now stealing from the uh, um, from the same DAO, the original DAO, in order to kind of secure the funds. So these are friendly hands that are now uh, using the same DAO exploit to kind of take it out. But let's just kind of go back to the beginning, okay? This is the DAO. Yeah, it's just a paper plate. You know, you got all these little dots on the sides. These are everyone who participated in the DAO. And like uh, over here, we got this one little one, yeah? This, this guy here, you know, he, he was entitled to his share of the DAO. Like, and uh, that's just like this tiny little, a, a tiny little sliver of it. And like, you know, the DAO is a pretty flexible application. You know, it's got a lot of um, different, uh, you know, mechanics to it. Like it's real flexible, you know, there's lots of voting. So yeah, so this guy joined and then he realizes like, you know what? Like I found a way where I, you know, I could actually, take my fair share of the company or a decent part of it. So he basically said, fuck you guys. I am out. This is me. I'm gone. And the rest of the guys are like, Oh geez. Like where, where did all our funds go? Like, uh, you know, all these same, you know, voters here up top. <sighs> Now you got like basically a part that's missing. So that's a DAO kind of as it was a couple days ago. And the attacker now is in a child DAO. Child DAO. So he, uh, he's in there, he's sitting pretty, you know. Uh, it's pretty easy to infiltrate his DAO and maybe perform the same exploit on it. Like just by sending a little bit of uh, splitting to his DAO and then you're able to kind of perform the same thing. Because all these DAOs share the same code, the same exploit is in all of them. Um, but now you got like this two thirds of this pie that are just like, uh, what do we do? So that as of last night, white hat attacker, I think it split it even into two DAOs. So now like these are both controlled and two child DAOs. And it's just like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. We're in control of the funds. So like all these people are like, they don't even have like their DAO anymore. Um, and even these, I think it's just like, uh, just like one guy, one guy. You know, and uh, this one here, probably even the same guy. Or might even be like the team of developers. But these are, you know, white hat. White hat's a term to describe uh, hackers. It's like white hat is uh, um, someone who's doing it for the, the greater good, where black hat is someone who's in it for his own intention. So now you got these two child DAOs, you got this one. So now this guy, the hacker, exploiter, whatever you want to call him, last night, or he, I think it was actually in the past couple of hours here, he basically took a little piece of his DAO and threw it in their DAOs. So now he has the ability to do the exploit to them, but they basically quickly moved. Um, maybe I should showing this here. Let me change my camera. So thanks for the heart, guys. Uh, so got your child DAO. That's the hacker. These are the two friendly ones. He just, you know put his DAO in there. So he's actually able to drain. But the the white hack guys are kind of one step ahead of them. They're like, before you can execute the same exploit, they're, they're already doing it. So um, now, now you got kind of a game of cat and mouse. And uh, basically what they want to do right now is do a soft fork. So all of this basically, you know, all stays together. And so these funds technically aren't stolen yet. It's just they're... They're no longer in the hands of the uh, the buyers. Like these, these are all the guys who own DAO tokens who are like, man, I, I hope we get complete again <laughs> because uh, right now, you know, it's three dudes or even two just uh, duking it out. And yeah, like there's a lot of ways we can fix this problem. Right now, they can delay the problem. <laughs> the joke I said last night is uh, Slocket has uh, successfully recreated the. Uh, 
uh, the U.S. Senate in, in blockchain form. So, uh, yeah, props to turning the DAO into uh, the political party. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's what the scenario is at right now. But, like, let's go back a bit. Let's uh, throw that out. Like, this is the DAO as, we, as, you know, the Ethereum network sees it. You know, it's just, this is just a DAP. It's all self-contained. This plate here, this is the Ethereum network. You know, the DAO runs within it, and uh, it's kind of bound by the, the, the laws. Well, okay, so who controls this plate here? You know, so the plate isn't as flexible, you know, if uh, they want, you know, to go back to this child DAO or whatever, keep it the same way. They all, that's what they essentially have to do. They have to vote between, do they want this or do they want this? So, again, back to our example, you know. So, all these dots were the guys who control DAO. But, like, who controls the Ethereum DAO, as we call it? It's the miners, so, yeah. You know, these Lego blocks are going to represent, you know, our miners. And what are miners, really? Like, these guys are contractors. Like, they're, they're dudes with mining cards, you know, they're just on whatever chain is most profitable. And right now, you know, Ethereum is extremely profitable. Um, and uh, Decred is actually very profitable, too. You can actually mine both of them at the same time and get even more profits. But, um, yeah, so these guys really, they're, they're just kind of looking at us like, yeah, this one, man, that's pretty crazy. Glad, glad I'm not, I don't own any DAO. Maybe one, one or two of these guys owns a little DAO. Uh, you know, they're the same dudes. But uh, they're, they're, they're just doing whatever, you know, they, they think is best. You know, if they don't have to change the chain, they don't have to. But, you know, Ethereum, I think, has already shown how impressive they can, you know, fork. You know, they can go in one direction, they can go in another pretty easily. And that's because we have awesome developers like Vitalik and, you know, Vinay and... Uh, Geez, who else? This would be Vlad. But, you know, like, these guys have their certain influence, but they're just on the outside here. You know, they, they can, you know, sway the ties. You know, some some miners might go with them. Some might go against them. Like, look at look at this, uh, like, a meeting table, you know? Like, so now you got miners who kind of have, have a split decision to make. And you know what? They need to make a unanimous decision because, yeah, this thing can only go one way. And... Some of them might look at, you know, like the DAO is just a DAP, just like, you know, Augur is a DAP. Like we, we have to, you know, stand by the terms and conditions that were created. And, you know, like the, these guys here, they're all saying, well, it's probably a good idea if, you know, we help them out because clearly there is a programming issue. And, you know, yeah, this is a great, you know, voting system. It can, you know, can have like 20% go one way, 20% go the other way. But the Ethereum network is like a jury. Like, they all have to agree. You know, you can't have indecision. You got to have everyone voting one way or everyone voting the other way. So what makes this more interesting, now, now the hacker has basically said, that's our hacker, uh, hey, I'm going to offer up the uh, Ethereum miners. Uh, I'm going to offer them up uh, a part of the, the, the DAO that I've taken. And right now, uh, let's see, uh, the specs I got this morning from my miner friend, let's see, where average time is 17 seconds. Um, I might have to go to Wolfram for this. Sorry, I forgot to do this calculation before I started this, but let's see. Wolfram is a great tool for, you know, any calculations. So, one day... Uh, trying to type and read the screen at the same time. One day divided by 17 seconds. Ba -ba 582, so that's about how many blocks are created. So uh, right now it's five ether per block. So we'll just make that, you know, 25,000. And then whatever the current market value of ether is, let's just, you know, Let's say it's like fifteen dollars, just just for the sake of this example. So that means the network is currently absorb like paying out three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars to the miners every day. And now now this um, this hacker, you know, he says uh, I'll, I'll give a million ether to uh, to these guys if they um, you know if 
they followed my lead, you know, come on over guys. I got a little money for you. And you know, a couple of them were like, man, thinking short term, it's like, that's a lot of payout. Gotta, you know, check that shit out. But you, you have other miners and you know, this is kind of where it's really interesting is like some miners are always like, well, whatever the, the core developers want is usually within the best interest of the network, within the best value of the network. Cause like these short term payout guys, they're just like, well, you know, I'll mine those blocks, but uh, yeah, I got to make sure I dump before everyone else. And if the networks, if the community sees that, you know, we're going to be having a million ether come into the market, they're going to probably dump beforehand. So, you know what? It's pretty short sighted of them. So, I think it's important to realize that this is just an election, you know, like everything else. And they're voting on the Dow. And you know what? This might send, set like political precedents or legal precedents on things like the Augur project. Because, you know, Augur. We could have some crazy, you know, prediction market that's like, man, we gotta, we gotta cancel this. We gotta get rid of all the money because it's gonna cause something really bad to happen. Well, you know, that's what's going on with the Dow right now. We don't, we kind of want to set precedent to say, you know, if there's an error, we can fix it. But at the same time, we gotta, you gotta realize this is gonna be coming up in the future. So right now, we're kind of learning if the network still has the support or the developer still has support of the network. Well, soon, you know, the Ethereum network, the DAO, is going to be changing to proof of stake. And at that point, you know, these miners, some of them might be still around because, you know, maybe they kept their Ether and they're pretty keen on it. But now you have guys who have a lot of Ether who are, you know, choosing the network. And at that point, it, it becomes a lot easier decision to make because it's no longer contractors. It's people who own Ether. And you know what? Even even our hacker is is in that network, and I still have to talk to Vlad to understand what the risks are. But I think it's probably a lot easier decision to make when it's these guys making it. Because you know what, like th this is important, guys. We we don't want this to break. You know, and it needs to. The Ethereum network is resilient, and I think it will bounce back. But you never know. Yeah, it looks pretty strong. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Thanks for tuning in. This is really fun. And uh, I, I look forward to doing more. Uh, check out Block Talk. Like, subscribe. This Friday, we're, uh, we're going to be doing a, a what's it called? A hangout with Breakout Coin. They're doing an ICO on um, Bittrex right now. And uh, we'll probably do a little gambling uh, during the show. It'll be fun. And then maybe before that, I think I'm going to talk with um, Anthony Diorio and possibly. One of the guys from Augur. I'm still setting it up, so it's, this is all speculation. But uh, it'll be really interesting to hear their thoughts, and maybe they'll watch this too. So see you later, guys. See you in the next 1,000 blocks.